Now, how do you put your diagnosis? Basically. So now, to put your diagnosis of preeclampsia, when you have finished by visualizing the risk factors, the risk factors you see from your issue, your, your past issue, and your identification. And when you have visualized the clinical presentation by seeing the knowing the mechanism and the, the mechanism of the preeclampsia, you visualize the clinical presentation of the patient. I've said generally a patient in preeclampsia on your issue on your physical examination, you are going to have an increased blood pressure and you do your analysis on the urine deep sick, you are going to have put you know, yeah, all those are the elements on the physical examination that can tell that somebody is having preeclampsia. Basically, so those are the different elements that you need to visualize when you have a patient like this. Now, when you have a patient after in obstetric and gynecology, I've already told you that you should not directly jump into the diagnosis. Basically, so you the diagnosis is made up of compartments. Basically, the first element of your diagnosis is the big topic of the diagnosis. When you identify a patient that is having a hypertension in pregnancy, you call it a hypertensive disease. You say that you conclude on a hypertensive disease in pregnancy. That's a big topic, hypertensive disease in pregnancy. Now, inside the hypertensive disease in pregnancy, you say that your first differential is preeclampsia. That is the first differential that you must have always in hypertensive disease in pregnancy. Why? Because you may not you may not see the protonoia at the instant where you are seeing your deep sick provided you are doing a deep sick at 12 o'clock there may not be any um urine positive deep sick generally the best deep sick that has to be done is done in the early morning on the first urine basically because the first urine is a measure of the glomerular filtration rate is a urine for the for the the whole 12 hours that the patient was sleeping basically that's why the first urine is very important in measuring the proteins is it can generate that so that's generally that's what you have to assess when you want to assess the urine disease so if you come to a patient that has a ur is urinating at 1 a.m at 1 p.m sorry in the afternoon you may not see any protein and with that pro with that you cannot say that the patient is not having program so every time you have a patient that has hypertensive disease in pregnancy even though they may not be protein at the at the instance where you're evaluating the patient don't directly say that it is gestational hypertension but first say it is preeclampsia. Now, your differential diagnosis can be gestational hypertension, third one can be chronic hypertension, fourth one can be superimposed gestational hypertension and chronic hypertension, and the fifth one can be eclampsia. So, those are the different hypertensive disease in pregnancy. So, after putting your differentials, we now go now to speak about the complication of the hypertensive disease in pregnancy. Is it the complication that we said? We said it can be obstetrics complication, which are health syndrome, which are eclampsia, which are postpartum hemorrhage, which are placenta abruptio, and the fetal complication, which are acute fetal distress, intrauterine fetal dysnise, or growth restriction. And you have already all the elements of the physical examination that you need to do in order to assess them. Now, the next thing is going to be the non obstetric complication. We have already spoken about that, and we have spoken about the mechanism that hypertension is going to result to this non obstetric complication, and the mechanism via which proteinuria is going to result to those non obstetric complication. Now, after speaking about the complication, you have completed now your diagnosis. Is it clear? So you have completed your diagnosis. Now, in the diagnostic discussion, the diagnostic discussion, you can now bring out elements like the risk factor of the patient that bring brought up to to this. So for you to to say that this uh, patient, you start from the risk factor, then you go to the presentation, then you go to the complication, then you even speak about the background of the patient. Is it clear? So all those are the risk factors. You go to the presentation of a patient and speak about the complication of the patient too in a diagnosis discussion. So this is how you you bring out your diagnosis when you have a, a patient that has preeclampsia. So after this now you are now going to visualize the investigation.